here this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Well, thank you, Dr. Kalupa. And uh, my first lesson is uh, the key to effective communication is to keep expectations very low. So, so, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, uh, I begin with a disclosure, and that is I have never had the opportunity to wear a uniform of any of the armed services of the United States. So I have not served in the military. Uh, but perhaps more than most civilians, I do have an affinity for those who wear the uniform. As Dr. Kalupa mentioned, my dad was a professor at West Point. We moved there when I was two. He was a civilian professor. He stayed there until he passed away on duty 25 years later. He is buried at West Point. I grew up at West Point. For those in the Army or those who know West Point, we lived in the gingerbread house right next to Trophy Point. And uh, my alarm clock was the cannon that would go off at 5.20 in the morning. And uh, on a good day, I could hear the bugles first, but mostly I just heard the cannons. Uh, for the last 26 years, I've had the honor to teach and advise the United States Marine Corps. Uh, and uh, of all the work I've done in uniform, most of it has been with Marines. Uh, I have also been working on a number of joint commands, and I have the honor of teaching five or six times a year at the Defense Information School in Fort Meade, and that's also one of my favorite things to do, and I've met a bunch of Air Force folks at Fort Meade, and I believe it is because of them that the Air Force came to know of me, and this is my second time with the Air Force. I'm delighted to be here. What I want to share with you today uh, is the fruits of my research and work into communication as an instrument of policy, communication as an instrument that helps us achieve outcomes. And along the way, I want to cover three things in the next 50, uh, 40, uh, 40 minutes. Uh, the first is foundational principles of leadership communication and the most effective ways that leaders can deploy communication to influence outcomes. The second, I want to use the framework of war fighting as a discipline to help us better understand the ways to use communication effectively. And then finally, I want to leave you with a tool. And it's a tool that will be made available to you afterward uh, in a PDF. And it is also, for those who've read uh, my book, The Power of Communication, uh, it is an adaptation of what you will have read in chapter two uh, called Taking Audiences Seriously. It's the, there it's called an audience engagement checklist. We're going to call it a leadership communication planning checklist. Uh, that's what we'll cover between now and uh, 45 minutes after the hour. <clears throat> so let's begin with the core principles. The big takeaway I'd like you to leave the room with is this. Communication has power. Communication has the ability to influence outcomes. Communication has the ability to advance the foreign policy of the United States. Communication has the ability to promote unit cohesion, to promote good relations with allies and with the communities in which you operate. Communication done effectively has the ability to be a force multiplier, to allow you to accomplish more, better, faster than if you don't have effective communication. But all too often, even among people who are strategically focused, there's a tendency to not take communication as seriously as the other instruments of power. And as a result, that communication may dissipate. And the effectiveness may be very, very small. And you get a lot of churn for very little return on that investment. You get a lot of activity, but not a lot of outcome. And sometimes, ineffective communication causes self-inflicted harm and actually hurts the foreign policy of the United States, or actually inhibits unit cohesion, or it actually strains relations with allies or with the communities with which we have to engage. Done well, effective communication can 
move people and move institutions. Think of President Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall. Done ineffectively, communication can create friction. And now I look lovingly at the Marine in the second row. And I note that on the day the Marines got to Baghdad, April 10, 2003, a 20-year-old corporal on the command of a major climbed up a piece of equipment and laid an American flag over the statue of Saddam Hussein in Firdos Square. It was right in front of the Palestine Hotel. The world's press corps was there. It was captured live on television. And that hurt the interests of the United States. Don't take my word for it. Within two minutes, then Major General James Mattis got on the horn with the tank commander and said, get that mm -mm flag off that statue. And it was taken down. It was only up for two minutes. But those two minutes def defined the American arrival into Baghdad. And it was the imagery of an occupying power. It was an image of American triumphalism at a time when the political leadership was saying, we're there for good reasons, not to acquire property or to take over the country. That ineffective piece of communication hurt the interests of the United States. We need to be diligent and recognize that what we do for a living is now witnessed, is now recorded, is now shared, and the people who are best at this are always aware that communication has consequences. Effective communication has positive consequence. Ineffective communication has negative consequence. I'd like to focus on communication as a discipline of leadership. And of all the ways to understand leadership, the one that I've always found most appealing is a definition by late General and President Dwight Eisenhower, who said that leadership consists of getting people to do what you want them to do because they want to do it. Getting those who matter to you to want to do what you want them to do is a core leadership discipline. And to quote one of then General Eisenhower's colleagues in the prosecution of the war in Europe, the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the difference between management and leadership is communication. The difference between management and leadership is communication, and leadership is the process of getting those who matter to you to do what you want them to do because they want to.